Full disclaimer before we get into this video, I am not an auto body or paint professional, so take my advice in this video with a grain of salt, and please learn from my mistakes because there were plenty made in this video, and while the results did turn out pretty good, they could have been a bit better with some tweaks here and there, and I'm hoping you learned something from this, or at least you're entertained with the mistakes that I made. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you guys how you can paint your car or a part of your car at home and get professional results for cheaper than you thought. Let's dive into it. So I'm not gonna be painting the entire Z, more on that later, but I am gonna be painting the hood and probably the side view mirrors. Now the hood is some of the worst paint on the car. You can see it's got pretty bad clear coat failure. There's scratches all over it. It just looks terrible. So I'm gonna show you guys how to prep this how to paint it, and how to get professional level results at home for pretty cheap. All right, so we've got the hood off the car, put up on some sawhorses here, and I got the hood vents taken out. We've got our trusty DA here. I talked about this in a previous video. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight one that I've had for like 10 years. It's lasted really well. We're gonna start by sanding this thing with 180. Now this is pretty coarse, so I'm just gonna do one or two quick passes over it, really just to knock down some of the bad spots. Like this scratch here is pretty deep, so I'm gonna wanna feather that out. And then like where the clear coat has failed, it's so rough and textured that I've really gotta fan it out with this 180. And then I'll go to a finer grit, stepping up to 220 and eventually 320. So let's get to sanding. So I've talked about using a DA in the past. The most important things to keep in mind are just to let the DA do the work. So keep it flat, don't run it up on an edge, and don't put too much pressure on it, and you should be good. A couple things to keep in mind if you are sanding something that has had like clear coat failure like this has, or paint failure, or anything along those lines. You're going to want to sand all of it completely out. You can see I didn't leave any leftover clear coat, like here I still need to sand more. Just knocking this down a bit isn't going to be a good base for the new paint to adhere to. So I've got to sand it all off and you can see we're down to the like factory primer that they put on this thing. Now in areas like this, there was no clear coat. It had just come completely off. You can see it had like fl flaked from that to nothing. So the factory base coat is a good base for the new paint to go on. But like I said, if that clear is there, we have to make sure we're sanding it completely off. All right, desperate times call for desperate measures. The DA was working. Uh, it just wasn't working fast enough and patience is not my greatest virtue. So I grabbed some 80 grit just on a sanding block. And I would encourage you to do this if you're doing any kind of like body work on a car before you're gonna paint it. I'm not planning on doing body work here, so I'm being extra careful to only sand the failed clear coat spots with the 80 and I'm trying to leave everything else to hit with the DA. Let me show you the difference. So this spot here has all been sanded with the 80 grit and you can see there's pretty coarse scratches. I mean, like you can't feel them, but you can definitely see the difference versus this was with the DA. There's no like streaks in it from the scratches like there is here. So I'm just trying to be real careful and just sand the clear coat down and I'm stopping when I get to this like white gray primer looking stuff. And then I'll go over that whole thing with the DA. It's making it a lot faster. I just have to be a bit more careful little update on the hood here. So we sanded it with that 80 and then I sanded all the 80 grit scratches out with the 180 on the DA. It's looking a whole lot smoother. Now we can switch out the paper on the DA to something finer and go over the whole hood again. All right, we are almost there. Prep work is super boring, so I haven't been filming a whole lot of it, but pretty much all we did is sanded the rough spots with 80, sanded the 80 grit scratches out with 180 on the DA, then switched up the DA to 220 and then to 320. And that's where we're at now. 320 is pretty fine, at least on a DA. If it was like single stage paint, I would probably just leave it and paint over it, but I'm gonna go the extra step and wet sand it with 400. That way I know for sure it's good. Plus I'm gonna be painting the hood black or pretty close to black and dark colors will show imperfections a lot more than like white or light color. So I'd just rather be on the safe side. It's only gonna take me an extra, I don't know, 30 minutes or so just to kind of wet sand the whole thing. So I'm gonna get onto that. 
I've talked about how to wet sand and stuff before when I did the front bumper. So check that video out if you need some tips on that. I'm gonna jump into sanding this thing so we can get it ready to paint. So at this point, I had just finished sanding the hood with 400. I really, really, really should have stepped up to a finer grit, like 600 or 800. I don't know how the sand scratches covered up in this hood because the first couple coats of base, you could really see those 400 grit sand scratches. So some advice there, take your sanding a bit further, especially if you're gonna do a basing clear, and step it up to at least 600, I would say 800 to be safe. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, sanding with 400 wet is typically what you would do to primer over it as like a last coat of primer. But hey, it's been a long time since I've done paint and body work and that's kind of what this was about, was to learn and that's what we're doing here. So learn from me <laughs> and if you're gonna paint over something, sand it with a finer grit to finish it. Like I said, six to 800 should be good. All right, the hood is done, good to go. Turned out great. I'm undecided if I'm gonna prep these vents and paint them on the hood or just leave them this kind of like black plastic. Not sure. Well, with the hood done, we can turn our attention to the mirrors. Let me get these off the car and then we will get started on them. All right, we got the GK Tech mirrors off the car and you'll notice I was able to pull the glass out. Pretty neat little design here. It's just like a, a ball and socket. And if you just pull lightly, it pops right out. Real simple, it should be able to pop back in, but now we just have one less thing to mask off so we can get to prepping this thing. So because these GK Tech mirrors are pretty new, they don't have any damage or anything, uh, I can really just go straight to wet sanding them with 400 and then they'll be ready to paint. Nice and easy. If you were sanding, let's say, a replacement fender for your car and it was new, you could pretty much do the same thing. I would just either scuff it with some Scotch-Brite or wet sand it with like 400, and then it'd, it'd be ready to paint, really. You don't need to go through what I went through on the hood where you're like stepping it up through all the grits. I just did that because the clear coat was so bad. So do keep that in mind as you're prepping for paint. Mirrors are sanded down and ready for paint. See, there's no real shiny spots on them. They're all scuffed up, ready to go. All that's left now is for me to hit the paint store, buy some last minute supplies, and then lay some color on this hood and these mirrors. All right, we are continuing this painting journey. I went to the paint store today and picked up some supplies. Let me show you what we're working with. So this base coat I've actually had for years. It's a Subaru Midnight Black. That's what the hood and the mirrors are gonna be. And then the paint store mixed up some clear for me. That is the clear coat and that is the hardener. They only had slow in stock, so I'm hoping that works because it is kind of getting cold nowadays, but it should be fine. We've got some prep all. I love this stuff. It is great for the last prep you're gonna do on something right before you paint it. The plan is to go to my buddy's house tomorrow and paint the hood at his house. Now, the reason I'm not going to do it at my house is because my air compressor is way too small to paint something as big as a hood, but my air compressor is not so small that I can't paint the mirrors. So I have the side view mirrors hanging up here. I hung them from the rafters with a coat hanger, and I actually drilled a little hole in the mount there and then wrapped it around a screw, so they're pretty secure. They do kind of like swing back and forth, but worst case, I can hold it while I paint it, or I don't know, we'll figure that out, but they seem to be okay. Now, if you're asking yourself, why don't I just paint everything at his house, that way I do it all at once, I want to make sure that this stuff is gonna work, that it's gonna look good. I wanna get the feel of painting again, because it's been close to 10 years. Um, and yeah, I haven't even set up a spray gun in a really long time. I don't even know if the gun I have works. So I wanna do all the testing tonight, and if it goes well, do the testing on the mirrors. That way I know exactly what I'm doing so I can just go to his house, knock out the hood and be done rather than spend hours there trying to figure all this out then. So I'm gonna take you guys along the learning journey tonight and hopefully we will end the night with some cool painted mirrors. Before we start mixing paint and getting ready to spray, I need to cover the Z in some plastic and I'm probably gonna do the same with the garage door. All right, got the Z taped off, the garage doors taped off. I just need to clean these mirrors and then we're gonna mix up some paint. Okay, so the reason we are testing things tonight is because I don't really have all the right stuff. I have 
this base coat that's been sitting around for quite a while. This is a totally different brand reducer. I just realized these are hardeners, which I think is actually for clear coat. So we are gonna set those aside. This is supposed to have a catalyst in it, but after some research, the catalyst is not needed. It does help, but it's not needed. So we're gonna try using Nason brand base with PPG reducer and test it out. Like I said, that's what tonight's about, testing this stuff out to see if it works. If it does work, then we can tackle the hood tomorrow. So I'm gonna mix this up and hope for the best. I will check back with you guys when I have some paint laid either on the mirrors or maybe just on the plastic over here. Either way, let's get to it. All right, we got the base coat down. Surprisingly, it laid out perfect. What I read on the forums was right about not needing a catalyst. Well, at least as far as I know, this paint could never dry or it could chip off at the first sign of the road. But for now, it looks sick. I will tell you this paint is way different than I thought it was. So it's called Midnight Black. It's Subaru color. And at first glance, it looks kind of black. And then you hit it with some light and it is not black. Now I'm not mad about this. I actually think it's a really cool color and it's gonna look pretty crazy when I actually get to putting it on the hood of the car. But uh, let me show you. Now keep in mind, this doesn't have a clear coat on it yet. So it's gonna be a lot more shiny but pretty excited with the way the base laid down. So like I said, at first glance, looks pretty black, which is what I was going for, especially here. So not in the light, but if I put a light on it, like this flashlight, see how it totally changes colors. Now it's like a really pearly blue, crazy. So I'm thinking that's what it'll look like in the sun. And then in, the dark or shadows, it'll probably look a bit more like that. Either way, I'm cool with it. Like I said, I think it's gonna look really crazy when it actually gets to going on the hood of the car. So when it comes to mixing paint, it can easily seem overwhelming. If you have a mixing cup like this, there's a million little numbers on it. But for the most part, this stuff's pretty simple, right? Once I realized that the catalyst was not needed for that paint, it was just two to one. So two parts paint, one part reducer, so basically like a 50% reduction with the added reducer. Really simple, then you just stir it, you strain it. So I have like a paper cone that has a little mesh on the bottom that you strain the paint through just to make sure there's no dirt in there. And then you paint. Now I had mentioned when we're doing primer, you wanna paint with like a 50% overlap. It's really hard on something this small. I was kind of just making sure I covered the whole thing. I was using the flashlight as I was painting to see where I was going to where I wasn't getting like dry spots or anything. And you can see it's a pretty consistent finish. You can also see there's like tiny little specks. That's probably dirt, but we're just gonna ignore that. This is the bottom of the mirror anyways. <laughs> I didn't think the garage paint job was gonna come out perfect, but honestly, it's, it's looking better than I could have imagined with how little time I've put into this so far. I hope this goes to show you, you can get absolutely sick results by doing it at home. So. Next, I'm gonna mix up the clear coat. For the clear I'm using, I just asked the guy at the paint shop what the mix ratio was, and it is four to one. So that means four parts clear, one part hardener. It's actually not a reducer, it's a hardener. So that's what the clear uses to dry. And same thing, I'm just gonna use our little mixing cup here. And it actually has a four to one to two. We'll just ignore the two, which is that third column there. So you could do this a couple different ways, right? There's some ratios on here, four to one to two, four to one to one to one. I don't know why you need four columns there. You can also just do it by using the actual number, right? I could pour two and then I would pour 0.5, which isn't actually on here, but you get what I'm trying to say. There's a few different ways to measure this kind of stuff. It's not nearly as overwhelming as it looks when you glance at something like this. Just ask your local paint shop what the ratio is, and you can even ask them for help on how to mix it, and they'll kind of point you in the right direction, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's mix up some clear and get it on these mirrors. All right, we're done. Clear coat is on, and it looks great. Honestly, considering I did this in my garage with some like 10-year-old paint, a 10-year-old Harbor Freight paint gun, all I did was run some lacquer thinner through it, cleaned a few bits on the outside, hooked up air to it, and the thing worked great. I didn't even have to fine tune it or anything. I did a test spray out on the plastic over there. Works great. I'm super happy with the way these turned out. They're not perfect. If it was like a show car or something, I would want to touch them up. But for a drift car, they look sick. 
super shiny and this color is really rad. It's got so much flop where it goes from that black to like this dark metallic blue. It's really cool. Let me show you with the clear on because it looks great. You can see here in the dark, really shiny. That clear laid down great. Super happy with that. Here's the other one over here. Let me get a flashlight on this so you can see what the blue looks like. Love that. Such a cool color. So you can see there's like little specks of dirt. That's just what you get from painting in a garage here. Um, I could have done a bit more to make that better, like wet the floor. But overall, like I said, I'm really happy. I'm excited that everything worked out well. Tomorrow we will get to painting the hood and I hope that it all looks as good as this does. All right, it's the next morning. We are headed to my buddy's house to get this hood painted. The mirrors turned out sick. Uh, I'll throw a little clip in here of how they look in the sun. Super happy with how those turned out. The color looks really cool in the sun. I think it's gonna be even cooler on this hood. So I will catch you guys when we get to his house and get all set up, ready to paint. All right, well, slight change of plans. I'm driving back home without a hood. So I left the hood at my buddy's house. We started to get things set up and realized it was a lot windier than the weather said it was gonna be. Originally, the weather said we had a couple of hours of really nice weather. And yesterday the weather was great, so I had high hopes. But the wind had picked up and you definitely don't wanna paint in windy conditions, especially if you're not in like a controlled environment, like a spray booth or something. So some advice there, if you are painting in a garage or outside or anything like that, definitely be patient and wait for decent weather because it can make or break a paint job. I couldn't imagine painting today and then having a big gust of wind kick up and just throw a bunch of dirt in the middle of my paint job or totally mess up the spray coming out of the gun. Definitely don't want to do that. So patience is key. We're going to hold off till tomorrow. At least I've got everything at my buddy's house ready to go so I can just show up tomorrow and paint as long as the weather holds out for us. So I will catch you guys tomorrow, hopefully painting the hood. Change your plans again. It's still kind of windy, little tiny breezy outside. So we're actually in the shop. I'm gonna mask some stuff off in here and then we're gonna paint this hood. All right, we're all set up. I'm gonna mix the paint and lay it on the hood. I'll probably throw you guys on a time lapse. Hopefully it turns out good. So we start by dialing in some settings on the gun and then I spray this edge as well as a few of the bare metal spots. I wanted to see if they were gonna react or if the paint was even gonna stick. And that first edge I did immediately does react so then we wipe it off, take another look, I paint again, and then this happens. Ran into a little issue here. If you can see that imperfection, call that fish eyes. That is contaminants on the panel, so taking a break here, we're gonna clean it again, a little bit better this time, and then try again. Second time's the charm here. Start painting, immediately notice the paint gun is spraying very strangely, pull the nozzle off, drip paint everywhere, make a huge mess, my hands are now covered in paint. I hand Evan the tip of the paint gun so he can clean it off in hopes to get the spray pattern a bit better, and we try again. I notice the pattern's better, but still not great, and you'll see what happens right here. Let me show you how the hood looks. So I don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but there's some striping there due to the unevenness of our little Harbor Freight gun here. So we're gonna hang this guy up and switch to something a bit better. So this is probably the hardest aspect of painting anything, whether you're painting at home or in a fancy booth or whatever, there's so much room for error and it really doesn't take a lot to totally mess up a paint job. And you kind of have to be real with yourself and realize like, hey, this is not going the direction I want. Let me stop and fix it because you can't just lay paint over something bad. You may have seen in a time lapse earlier, the very first coat I put down or tried to put down immediately reacted. So we had to wipe it down, try again. Then the gun wasn't working well. So I had to pull the gun apart, which made paint spill everywhere. That shouldn't have happened. That was that was interesting. I hope that showed up on the time lapse because it's kind of funny. But uh, it's... It's a lot of that, right? Like you're just figuring stuff out as you go and hopefully it turns out well. And if it doesn't, you have to realize you just need to stop, fix whatever's wrong and then continue. You can't just pile it on and hope to cover it up, right? So that's kind of what we're doing here. The My Harbor Freight Gun 
Worked great in my garage, but on a panel this big, the spray pattern was not even. So it should come out kind of like this, right? Paint on the top, paint at the bottom, a nice even fan. And it was coming like heavy on the bottom and light on the top, which is what gave us these tiger stripes. It's kind of hard to see the stripes, but you can see there's some heavier spots than others. And I had kind of figured it out and tried to even out the spray pattern here, but it's still pretty light. So we're just gonna give up on the Harbor Freight gun for now. It needs to be like totally deep cleaned and it may not even be worth it. And I'm gonna pass the torch over to my buddy, Evan, who's been gracious enough to lend me his space and his air and now his paint gun. We've got his super fancy Iwata paint gun. Check this thing out. Super cool. That should lay a much more consistent pattern down on this hood. So fingers crossed, it comes out a bit better. I'm not striving for perfection here, but definitely better than what I've got now. <laughs> So with the base finally evened out thanks to Evan's help and his nice paint gun, I can move on to clear. I lay down the first coat, it starts to look alright, I pass the gun over to Evan who lays down, this is actually the last coat, and he does a much better job than I did. This last coat is really what brought the whole panel together, so big thank you to Evan. Somehow managed to save the base coat, it was looking kind of sketchy there for a while, but got it to turn out okay. Um, the clear is actually laying down pretty good. I think at the end of the day, it's gonna be all right. It's definitely not perfect, and I will kind of touch on why a bit later, but the clear is turning out good. This thing is definitely gonna be shiny, which was the biggest goal here. So we're gonna finish this up with another coat or two of clear, and we should be good. back home I just want to give you guys some quick b-roll of the hood now that it's on the car I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so let's recap what we learned here for starters sand your panel a bit more than you think like I said, I had stopped at 400 grit and I should have gone up a bit higher. Six to 800 definitely would have helped. Another thing we learned is primer is important. Now, I've always been taught don't paint over bare metal. This hood did have a few bare metal spots and I just kind of wanted to see what would happen because like I said, that's what I've been taught over the years, but I never really knew why other than to prevent rust. But this hood's aluminum, I know it's not gonna rust, so no issue there. Then the question came, is paint gonna stick to the bare metal? And it did, it looks fine. There's really no issue with it, although I can't say if there's gonna be an issue in the long run. There may be an issue with the paint not sticking over the course of time. I don't really know, we're gonna to have to find out. This would have turned out a bit better if I had just primered it and then wet sanded the primer with like 800 grit. It probably would have been flawless. There's definitely some flaws in it due to my lack of prep. But like I said, I wanted to see what I could get away with and this kind of goes to show that you can get away with a lot and still have a kind of decent result, which is what we were going for here. And I bet if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about painting your race car or something at home. Another big thing we learned is environment overall, right? The biggest issue with this paint job is some of the dirt that got in the paint. And I'm sure you can see some of that on camera. It's just like little specks here and there. Um, a lot of that was just dirt floating around in the air because we were painting in an open shop. There's really no way to avoid that. Another big issue we had that caused dirt to get into the paint was the paint gun was actually dripping water from the airline fitting. Now it had a water trap on it, but it was dripping right underneath the water trap. So we wrapped it in a paper towel, that way we wouldn't get water dripped onto our panel. And unfortunately, about halfway through, the paper towel started shedding lint just from being flexed on the airline. And Again, that now causes lint to get in your paint job, which just doesn't look good. So have the correct air fittings, make sure they're tight. You could even run a water trap off your air compressor. That way you wouldn't get as much water at the end of the line. Like I said, we're running a water trap on the bottom of the gun, but that doesn't prevent water from getting to that point. So kind of a weird issue, but it can happen. And like I said, the paper towel was just an added element 
to cause more flaws in the paint job. And if it wasn't for that and for just the dirt in the air, this honestly would have looked really good. But I'm not complaining. I still think it looks great considering the amount of time and prep I put into it, which wasn't much. And the fact that this is really old paint using the wrong reducer and no catalyst and very cheap clear, it still looks great, especially for a drift car. Like I said, no complaints. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it or at least are entertained by my struggles. <laughs> the whole reason I'm putting so much time and energy into making this thing look cool is because I have some really exciting news for you guys that I'm gonna share in the next video. Let's just say 2023 is gonna be a big year. A lot is coming and I am so excited to share it with you guys. So definitely subscribe if you're not already because things are gonna get crazy. Also, let me know what you think of this little added film style I did. I put a little bit of time into making the garage look a little bit better. I hope the audio is okay of me talking this far away from the camera. So drop a comment and let me know what you think. I always appreciate it. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I will catch you in the next one.